And our next presenter is Kano Banshaw, who is originally from Ethiopia. And he's been living in the States for about 17 years, I think, and got involved with Big River Farms. And he did a, a research project there on a plant that is grown in Ethiopia, just to see if it would grow well in our climate here and supply. We have a significant population in, Ethi in Minnesota from Ethiopia. Thank you very much, uh, Martin, for the introduction. Uh, so, yeah, as you just said, uh, my name is Kano Banjau, and I'm originally from Ethiopia, a country that is located on the Horn of Africa. Uh, it is a great pleasure indeed that I've been given this opportunity today to participate in this conference as a speaker. <clears throat> Since the year 2013, I farmed on a very small scale plot at the Big River Farms of the Minnesota Food Association. Over a period of seven years, as uh, Martin was saying, I grew a specialty crop known as anchote. Uh, today, I'm uh, going to talk about uh, growing anchote under the Midwest climatic conditions. Next slide, please. Uh, Anchote is a, is a tropical crop. It is a root crop that is native to Ethiopia, my home country. Next slide, please. Uh, for those of you who um, might not be familiar with Ethiopia, as I said, it is located on the Horn of Africa, uh, almost um, near to the Red Sea or across the Saudi Arabia and Yemen, Arab countries, about um, three degrees north of the equator. And uh, anchote is grown in that green uh, uh, portion of the map. That region is known as Oromia region, and anchote is grown on the left side, on the western side of this region. Next slide, please. Next, next slide. Thank you. Anchote uh, belongs to the cucurbite family, like uh, cucumbers and pumpkin or so. And internationally, it, it, it has got the scientific name Coccinia abyssinica. Uh, you might wonder that Ethiopia used to be called Abyssinia, not Ethiopia, it formerly used to be called Abyssinia, so the name Abyssinica comes from that uh, name. Uh, people eat uh, the roots, it's a root crop as I said, and also young birds of this plant. Next slide please. Uh, this, the, plant has got soft stems that can grow as up, up to almost 35 feet long. This, uh, this soft uh, stem uh, scrambles or grows uh, on, uh, on the ground or can climb trees, houses, fences, and so on. Next slide, please. Next, next slide. As you can see here, I also can climb trees like this. Please, uh, next, go to the next one. And the plant produces uh, over-shaped, plant-sized, uh, spotted white, green, white, spotted fruits, which turns uh, red when it is ripe. Next one, please. Uh, traditionally, this is a very popular uh, uh, root crop amongst Eth Ethiopians. Uh, they like to consume anchote, the roots, because people believe that it has a high nutritional value, uh, especially a uh, number of uh, minerals, especially rich in calcium. Therefore, they think that it has got also medicine as a, due to high uh, calcium content, 
They think that it has a medicinal value, which can heal various kinds of ailments, such as uh, mending broken bones and uh, dislocated joints. People also believe that if they consume juice prepared from the roots, it can treat uh, uh, sexually tra transmitted diseases like gonorrhea or other uh, diseases like tuberculosis and tumors. Furthermore, they believe that uh, chote uh, can enhance um, milk production of lactating mothers and make them uh, strong and healthy. Next slide, please. Okay, with that uh, as a short introduction about the plant, I would now would like to talk about my activity at the Big River Farms uh, uh, during the year 2019 only. Next slide, please. Uh, during the year 2019, I leased uh, a very small plot of 1.5 acres from the Minnesota Food Association and used uh, about just about uh, one acre to grow hanchote and the rest for other vegetable crops uh, as I listed here, like chard, kale, and so on. Next slide, please. So uh, towards the end of April, starting towards the end of April, I started um, uh, growing the seedlings, the, the seedlings in the greenhouse using 50 cell trays with one seed per cell. And uh, the seeds uh, originated from my own harvest. Uh, is this uh, organic seeds? I, har I, I harvested this uh, at the Big River Farms during the year 2018. That was, uh, so, and so I used my own, my own seeds, organic seeds. Uh, I left the, uh, the seedlings in the greenhouse for about one and a half months, uh, six weeks. Next slide, please. Uh, that's how I preserved uh, uh, my own seeds. Uh, next, uh, next one, please. Uh, the, my field activities consisted of uh, raising 40 raised, using 40 raised beds were prepared. Each bed was 250 feet long and five feet wide. Uh, they were covered, uh, as you can see here, with plastic mulch and uh, drip irrigation was uh, installed. Next one, please. Uh, I did a very elementary calculation of my acreage. Uh, as you can see here, uh, each bed was 250 feet long and five feet wide. That makes me uh, the area of 1,250 square feet, uh, each bed. So the total of 40 raised beds were uh, 50,000 square feet. I converted this to acres. As you know, one acre is equal to 43,560 square feet. And, uh, that is uh, almost exactly 1.1 acres. A very small plot, yes, small garden trees. Next one, please. And then I transferred my seedlings into the field and planted uh, in two rows per bed with one foot apart between adjacent plants. Uh, therefore, one bed alone, one bed with two rows, uh, we planted with 500 plants. So, so, therefore, my total seedlings planted for over 40 beds was almost 20,000 seedlings so were planted. Next one, please. I uh, used the, during the transpl transplanting the seedlings, used the water wheel transplanter, which was hooked to 
hooked to a tractor. And uh, the water will uh, uh, transplanter uh, pokes holes into the soil. It has got these uh, metal spikes you see there. And it also uh, delivers water and uh, fertilizer whenever needed. And then uh, the two, two individual sit at the back and then insert the seedling into the holes. That, uh, that's why it has been transplanted. Next one, please. Uh, yeah, my usual field activities uh, was uh, I watered, I irrigated my uh, uh, plants about uh, three days per week or as needed. And uh, uh, I did also about two, two, three days per week weeding. And every time I was at the farm, I went around and, and looked and controlled if there has been or, or observed if the disease, uh, my plants were infected by, or eaten by uh, insects and other pests. Next one, please. Uh, observation over the many years I've been at the farm, over, over, over seven years, I observed that anchovy is very competitive uh, under the Minnesota climatic conditions and grew very fast and covered uh, the, the field. And thus uh, uh, suppressed weeds. Uh, so uh, it, it is very competitive in uh, plant. Next one, please. Uh, observation during the from year 2013 through 2019 showed that roots, leaves, and fruits were not really uh, attacked by pests or disease, except that uh, I encountered uh, uh, problems with nematodes uh, boring into the roots uh, during late uh, August. The beginning of September. Uh, and also, I observed that uh, some attack by Japanese beetles, which uh, were eating the, the leaves. Next one, please. Uh, hanchote, you can, one can uh, harvest hanchote within about uh, up to after four months of planting. Uh, here, I would like to emphasize that I, I did not have any machinery for digging or harvesting. So I dug out the 20,000 roots by hand, physically, using a fork. Hanjote uh, has got uh, many roots and, uh, and hairs. I also did the trimming and cleaning physically. I, I couldn't use uh, like potato diggers because potato diggers were cutting my roots. The roots. Next one, please. So that's how it looks when it's dug out. And, and as you can see, a lot of roots, secondary roots and root hairs. And I have to do this by hand, trim this and clean by hand. Almost 20,000, over, over 20,000 roots. Next one, please. So when it is cleaned and you know, it looks like this. Next one, please. I, in the marketing, I, I packed the uh, batches of five pounds uh, and then I was able to sell it to the Ethiopian communities uh, which uh, live here in the Twin Cities as well as also uh, ship them to other European communities and other states of the United States. And I advertised my product uh, through words of mouth. Next one, please. I was trying to uh, estimate my harvest. So I said uh, I had uh, about 20,000 plants. I said, suppose uh, I lose 22,000 Maybe they are too small, have been eaten or, or damaged or so. If I lose 2,000, 
I'm left with about 18,000 to be sold. And I know from uh, previous observation, observations that 600 roots will weigh one pound. Therefore, from this, I said from one point, about one acre of land, you can, uh, you can harvest 3,000 pounds of anchote. Next one, please. Why do I? Why did I start growing anchote with a tropical crop uh, coming from Africa, here in Minnesota? Well, as I said before, uh, this is big demand by Ethiopian communities, which are almost now 100,000 uh, Ethiopians living in the state of Minnesota. Uh, this state is known as a small Ethiopia, uh, so uh, it is a big demand. So growing this crop uh, and making it available for my, my community is 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 I uh, got uh, many social values uh, and also economic values. Next one, please. This project is supported by NCR SER, Farmer Ranchers Sustainable Agricultural Grants, which Martin was talking about. Next one. Therefore, I would like to say, express my sincere gratitude towards Ruser for funding this uh, uh, project. I'm very, very grateful and indeed. And also to Ruser staff, who, to whom I uh, turn it at any, whenever I encounter problems, technical or other problems, they were kind to me. Uh, they were so helpful. Thank you. And also, uh, to Miss Molly Schaus, of the manager of the Big River Farms, who, who prepare my farms and have been given me, been, uh, to whom I turn uh, to share with me good advice, and also to other firm members of the Minnesota Food Association who were very kind to me and, and, and have been helping me all the time. Thank you very much. All right, Connell, thank you. We do have a couple of questions that have come in, yes. Kano. And so the yes. first one for you is, here's the first one. Do you have to let the fruit ferment before saving the seeds? Uh, uh, yeah. Do you no, have to let the fruit ferment? No, I leave, I leave the, uh, the ripe, these are the ripe fruits stay. Maybe in my in my in my garage like this, and then it is rots rots by itself. Mm, okay. And then I can just go into and, and, and open this and then take out the seeds. Not no fermentation. Did you continue to save your own seed? And if so, did you find the seed adapting to our growing season? Yes, very much indeed. Even now, what, what happened is, you know, the, I, I showed you the, the root size. In Ethiopia, they are very small. But under the Minnesota climatic condition, I think they like the, 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 the crop likes the soil type and also the abundance of rain and water. And it became very, very big, uh, you know, very large size the fruit uh, roots I, I harvested. So it is really highly acclimatized now. And then uh, one more question. How can I get some hanchote seeds to try in New England? I, if you're asking me, I, I, I don't have, in, I'm not selling my seeds, uh, but if, uh, is it the Department of Agriculture which uh, controls the importation of seeds and uh, uh, crops from outside, from outside the United States? I think if they can, if they, if they get a grant or um, permission to import uh, seeds, you can maybe uh, get it from Ethiopia. So actually, there was another question. Is there another name for Hanchote? Somebody is looking for information and can't find it. 
Oh, in, in the literature, or in the, it's written with an A. With an A, Anchote. In the side of H. Okay. So, in fact, the real name is with a written with an H, not with an A. Hmm, it, okay. It, if you go to the website and look for it, you you will find it written in Anchote without H. Hmm, okay. That's why. Uh, I just like to emphasize that, let's say, if I got time, uh, the introduction of Anchote uh, to maybe to be consumed, American consumers uh, would be of, would be rational because uh, those of you who have been to Ethiopian restaurants and eaten, eaten Ethiopian food, uh, you might have, you might know that there is a flat bread uh, served by Ethiopian restaurants uh, made from a grass called teff, T-E-F-F. -F. The seeds were brought to the United States about 50 years ago by a Peace Corps volunteer who now might be about 80 years old. He lives, uh, he still lives in Idaho. And he started to produce uh, seeds and now the seeds are very sold everywhere by and they consume by Ethiopians. And now that individual might, I think has become a multimillionaire just by growing an Ethiopian crop. So that um. is very, that's very encouraging. So, Kano, we've had another question, and this is: people want to know where where they can get seed. Is would a person um, would would there be a, how would a person go about getting seed from Ethiopia for Hanchote? Uh, I can I could I could help that person to get in con in connection with relatives and, and friends of mine back home. And mm -hmm. uh, as I said, uh, you might know nothing about the, the process of importing seeds or any animal product from outside of the United States, especially from Africa. It goes through a long process, uh, inspection, quarantine, what not? Um, so getting it is, uh, might be easy. Just somebody might put it in a pack, in a pack, package and and uh, mail it to that individual. But it, it, that individual will not get it directly. It should go through. It should be inspection is inspected and quarant should be put in a quarantine before it um, that individual can receive it. This, this is due to the probability that the, this kind of plants might carry, you know, diseases or insects or whatnot. Uh, so, otherwise, it might be easy to to get uh, get it by purchased in Ethiopia. It looks like somebody put a link in the chat that might that might be um, for the seeds, and then somebody also put in the Q and A box that the seed can be ordered from the U.S. National Germplasm website. Mm. 